so many answers to questions I had about what class should I teach or what should I put in this course or whatever, what product should I create came from me just asking the question out loud. If anybody walked by me on my street with my dog and they would think I'm a crazy lady because I'm talking to myself sometimes out loud is the only way for me to hear it. And um, anyway, I just think that really the first thing to do is try to slow down if you can. See if you can do a little practice. Maybe it's 10 minutes, but that's all you need to get started. And once you start, and once you start getting those nudges, then all of a sudden you're going to be like, whoa, that was another nudge or, oh, that was something else. Today you get to meet California artist Andrea Garvey, a beautiful, joyful, effervescent soul whose positivity is not only contagious, but completely infused in every single piece of her heart-stoppingly beautiful work. Hers is the kind of art that makes your soul smile. In this episode, she shares the incredible story of the painting that came to her in a life-changing dream after the passing of her beloved mother-in-law how that painting helped her through her grieving process and would go on to lead her on a completely unexpected journey, leaving a busy, hectic career in corporate America behind to become a full-time artist with a thriving career. I love Andrea's bubbly, generous, happy energy. And I found myself marveling at how many important gifts and insights she managed to jam-pack into this episode for us. See if you can guess which word I pulled before today's show. As usual, I'll tell you closer to the end of the show. For now, here's my conversation with Andrea Garvey. Welcome, Andrea. Hi, Kate. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. I'm so happy that you're here. And I know you've been extremely busy with the launch of your new online course, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it really... It really meant a lot to me that you made time to, to talk to us today for this, for this podcast because it, yeah, I really, I've been looking forward to chatting with you a lot. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. I like to, at the beginning of every show, share with you and also the listeners a little bit of the intent for this podcast. It, um, it really is ultimately, I'm realizing, I think a little bit of my own life's mission to dispel this to devote a lot of my own energy into dispelling this idea that only certain people have access to creativity. Um, Cause I, I, I see it everywhere as an artist in particular, I see people sort of comparing themselves to people who are obviously creative in the sort of traditional ways of like art painting and sculpture or whatever. But the, it, I, I've come to see how this belief that's that we could somehow be separate from what I believe is ultimately the language of the universe it yeah. speaks to us through creativity in all these different ways, but the belief that, that anybody has that they could be separate from something so fundamental to what we are, mm-hmm. it's why we're glitching. It's, it's what's wrong with everything. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, that's my mission. I want to, I want to, I want to help as many people as I possibly Yay. can in my life really get that we're all, we all have access to it. And in fact, maybe even have a responsibility to cultivating a relationship with creativity. So yeah, that's kind of how I found my way to you. Oh, you know, that is so amazing that you're doing that because I 100% agree. I have a lot of students and people who will message me and just think that they can't do it or they're not good enough or they, oh no, I'm not an artist. I mean, I hear that all the time. Somebody will actually say, I'm not an artist. And I just think if we could all just drop that from the vocabulary, because I think everybody is creative and I'm so glad that you're doing this. I can't wait to, you know, hear all your episodes because um, I think it's really important if everybody can just think that they can at least try and, you know, open their heart and their mind into just being creative. It's really saved me from so many things. I mean, it's not just about painting it's about, it's about so many different things. So that's so exciting that you're doing that. So good for you. Thank you. Can you, can you say a little bit more about that, about all the other things that it's, that it's about? Yeah. You know, um, I was, I, so in my little backstory is I, you know, I was a sort of, uh, create, well, I, 
I'll say I was a creative person, but you know, I just was a kid and I drew and I did all of the fun stuff. And I went to school really not knowing what I wanted to do at all. And I stumbled into graphic design and then I stumbled into the creative world and I was in the marketing and the corporate business for about 20 years. I did, I did not ever go down the road of being a fine artist or even teaching or anything. It was all corporate. And then, and then I, and then I had kids and then I didn't do anything. I, I didn't do anything. I didn't do the creative things. I really just focused on raising my family and going to work. And I loved all my jobs. I loved them, loved them, never thought I would do anything else. And then my mother-in-law who I'm extremely close to passed away suddenly. And I remember I had a dream and it was literally two nights after she died. I had this dream of a painting. And it's funny, somebody was in my studio the other day and we were looking at this painting. And even though that was almost 10 years ago, everything in that painting is the same colors, the same style, like it's all in this painting. And that painting I put away after I did it, but what it did was it really helped me through my grieving process. I felt the whole entire time I was making this, the dream I had into this, this painting, this, it was more of a drawing that turned into a painting. I just sort of thought about um, Anna is her name. And I thought about her. I felt her near me. I took me maybe two or three months to create it. And the whole entire time I was doing it, it just felt so good. And then that led to something else and that led to something else. And eventually it led to a side hustle. And then I was like, oh, wait, I love painting. Why haven't I been doing this my whole life? <laughs> <laughs> and it just led to so many doors and opportunities. And so I really think that, you know, I also have, to, I also want to go out and tell as many people in the world too, that, you know, it's not really just about being an artist and having your work in a gallery. It does things to you. When I sit in my studio and just do some drawing or painting or, or journaling or whatever it is, it's like all that crazy stuff in the world just stops and it goes away for a little bit. And I can just really be in my own space, in my own headspace. And it just does a lot to my, you know, mind and my heart. And anyway, um, that's sort of how like I, I flipped the corporate switch to this creative switch. It was a long time. It took 10 years. Mm. It was a side hustle in there and it wasn't an overnight thing. But what I did was I just every time a door opened, I'd kind of open it and I'd look through it and I'm like, why not? I'll go give it a try. I mean, I was 50 when this happened. So, you know, well, I wasn't quite 50. I was 50 when I quit my job, but it was, you know, I was past my sort of um, stage of thinking I would even do anything different than what I was doing for 20 years, which was, you know, corporate advertising and marketing. So yeah, that's sort of, <laughs> and it, I, I love this story so much because I think <laughs> <The jumble. laughs> when I, well, when I, when I hear the story about this dream that you have, I mean, I think we've all had uh, some variation of, a, of a, either a dream that felt extremely profound or a, an aha moment in your waking yeah. life where you look at a painting and it's just something shifts or uh, like yeah. it, it comes to us in different ways, but I think it's a powerful example that you're sharing of how there's this sort of mysterious, dormant, unseen energy that lives inside of us that is just waiting for this pivotal yes. time to speak to us. And, and that that's, you know, that's what this dream was for you. And, and it, it really did change, you know, listening to it and being open to it and following that, you know, it was compelling you to repeat the painting and practice it over again and work with the colors. And it's led yes. to, you know, it was, it was taking you somewhere. And I think, I think that's just, I mean, we all have access to that to that possibility. And, and I, and I, right. when we hear, so thank you for sharing that story, because mm. I think when we, when we share that story from the perspective of somebody who's already gone through it, it can maybe help somebody who's like, well, I had a dream like that too. And I kind of want to follow it. Like, look at the magic that can happen when you're open. To right. And yeah. And you know, too, it wasn't even, um, sometimes they're just like little nudges. Yeah. Sometimes they're like little intuitions. Like if I am in the middle of doing some sort of artwork or I'm doing some sort of writing, I'll just stop and be really quiet and think about it. And that little nudge will be like, oh no, pick that, you know, pick that turquoise again, or pick that magenta. Or in the, in this painting I was doing, it said, just keep going. What else could you do? That's like this painting. It really wasn't so clear cut for me. And none of the 
none of the uh, paths that I've been on have ever been really clear cut in this creative um, world that I'm in. When I was in corporate, everything was very clear cut. Oh, you're, I'm going to do this, and this is what I'm going to do today, and da da da. But this world that I'm in, this journey that I'm on, you, I just kind of like go. I do some open every morning. I do some writing and journaling, and I'm open, and I just am ready. And so I really try to pay attention to the little tiny nudges, and sometimes that, you know, somebody may not have a dream or they may not have something really profound that's happening to them, but they might have a nudge for something that they're either liking or not liking. And if they're not liking, you know, maybe try something else. If you are a artist, every, like I said, I believe everybody's an artist, but if you're starting out and you're trying a medium, let's say it's watercolor or let's say it's acrylic or even oils or just drawing and it doesn't feel right, that doesn't mean you should stop trying different types of art or different ways to be creative. One example is I don't consider myself a good writer, but I believe writing is also being creative and it, mm. it's being, um, you know, the practice of writing every morning um, is really, really helped me out. That's from the artist way book that, you know, um, that I loved is just, my writing's getting better because I'm practicing it, but I don't think that, okay, I have to be a great writer, but I'm just going to practice it. And maybe I'm not going to, you know, do a novel. That's okay. That's not what it's about. So when you're experimenting with different forms of mediums, try it and then maybe go try something else or keep practicing that one thing. So there's, it's, you know, to me, I feel like there's a huge open world of art and, that's not even talking about music or, you know, um, all the other different types of things that you could be creative about, creative with. It's the art. I feel like some people just try the one thing or the one class and then they, or they look in the gallery and see the one type of art and, and they think that's not me. There's mm -hmm. so much out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our, our definition of creativity needs some work. <laughs> yeah. it's, so, it's so narrow, you know, culturally, culturally, you said something a minute ago, I just want to go back to because I think it's really, really, really important. Um, and it's just around following those little nudges. And the yeah. you you I read a great little, I think it was one of your blog posts that you shared about your um, you were you were trying to paint a, a painting of I think it was at Pebble Beach. And it yes. just you couldn't get the trees and you didn't, yeah. you just were just so struggling with it. And it was, didn't, yeah. and then you just were like, I'm moving, I'm going to another, and you went to yeah. Capitola beach. And then yeah. all of a sudden <gasps> you just, you talk about how it felt right. And then the rest of the painting just kind of yeah. painted itself. And then, uh, and then there's magic that happened with that painting down the line. Yeah. But, but before you tell us that, yeah. I, I just, because I think this thing about getting in touch with like following the nudges, mm -hmm leads us to, it's almost like flexing a muscle and then you start to be able to understand the knowings of like but what would you say to somebody who's who's um who has no frame of reference at all mm -hmm. for knowings or nudges mm -hmm. about how to how to start to dip your toe into the water of being led in that way instead of from yeah. the rational mind like how, yeah. so how can what was that like for you how did you because it wasn't overnight you didn't just no. have a dream and then you're mm -hmm. like I know how to follow nudges and listen to knowings and I, yeah you know, how yeah. did you do it that is such an, a great question. I would say until I was in, until let's see, at least in my late forties, I never had, I might've had nudges, but I didn't pay attention to them because I was moving like a fast train, loved my job, got married, had kids, were all boys, crazy, crazy. Right. And I never even paid attention. And so I think if somebody is in that world where you're fast, fast, fast. Every day I wake up and I do my thing and I go to bed. I really, really believe that journaling or sitting quietly. So I like to, i like to say I meditate, but I got to be real. Like I really try to meditate and I'm working, I'm working on it. And I think that you can meditate in so many different ways. For me, it's just having quiet time and it's usually 10 or 15 minutes. And I usually listen to guided meditations. And sometimes I try to, to not and to do breathing, but I have this ritual where I have been doing this every day now for probably three or four years. And I started hearing about all these successful um, entrepreneurs, which I, I listened to. I'm a total podcast junkie, by the way. And I listened <laughs> to 
so many people who have stepped away from their main job or their corporate world and they did their their new job or they did a side hustle and they built their business. So I like to listen to as many people as possible. Well, they all had this in common. They all started their day in a in a really clear framework where they didn't get up and have their coffee and then run around and start their email or their to-do list. They all got up and they had their, this quiet time. And I have done that every single day for a while. And it's paid off because it makes you sort of just be quiet with yourself, do your writing, whatever your writing is, it could be about anything, it doesn't really matter. And I try to do a little reading and I do some gratitudes. I have this sort of thing I do. And um, the other thing is that I try to take some walks in there too, if I can, and just slow things down. I think that you can't really hear those nudges and intuitions and gut checks if you're moving too fast. So I would say the first step is to just slow down a little bit. If you don't have time to do a morning ritual because you're actually trying to get to your job and rush those kids to school, then maybe it's taking a little break from your day job and you're walking around the block and you're just without your phone, like, you know, just really putting that away and just really looking at the trees or listening to the birds. And I can't even tell you, Miss. my girlfriend Renee was the one who first told me, she's like, put that phone away when you're taking a walk. Cause I would mm-hmm. listen to podcasts when I would walk, I would be listening to, you know, all the time. And I started to uh, not, and then I just had more quiet time. And I had, I have so many answers to questions I had about what class should I teach or what should I put in this course or whatever, what product should I create came from me just asking the question out loud. If anybody walked by me on my street with my dog and they would think I'm a crazy lady because I'm talking to myself sometimes out loud is the only way for me to hear it. And um, anyway, I just think that really the first thing to do is try to slow down if you can see if you can do a little practice. Maybe it's 10 minutes but that's all you need to get started. And once you start, and once you start getting those nudges, then all of a sudden you're going to be like, whoa, that was another nudge or, oh, that was something else that, you know, and you recognize them more when you practice them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. So can you tell us a little bit more about, um, your, your morning practice, you know, so do you, is it, is it, what are the things, is it, is it the same every day? Do you like, what, do you ask a question before you do it? Like what, so you get up in the morning, you, yep. I get, slippers, then what? I, I, I have the craziest thing. And you know, for one of the silver linings of COVID for a year and a half, I'm in California. So my kids were not in school. They did not do in school for 18 months and they're teenagers, which meant I had a lot of uh, extra quiet time. But before, <laughs> before COVID started, Before the pandemic started, I was into my ritual for at least a year and a half anyway. So it, it, I just made it work. So what I did was I started setting my alarm a little bit earlier than I needed to. I just decided, okay, I'm just going to really try and get a good night's sleep, but set my alarm a little bit earlier and, um, just, you know, not to go off on too many tangents with you, but I listened to Mel Robbins. And Mel Robbins is a motivational speaker who is amazing. And she has this thing called the five second rule. And what she said to me, what she told me, not me personally, but what she said is like, it's one of the best things I've ever heard. Basically in a nutshell, every time you turn your snooze button off and you go back to sleep for like 10 minutes, your brain goes back into a deeper sleep and you're actually more tired. So that, that was one thing I stopped doing. I put my alarm on the other side of the room. <laughs> oh, good tip. Yeah, yeah. And so I actually have to get my butt out of bed. And I say to myself, oh, I just want to go back into bed, especially on the dark winter you know, mornings. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I do that. And I, I used to get up at 5.30 and I switched that to six because I really do believe you need as much sleep as you can. And so anyway, so the, so the six o'clock hour worked for me. And um, what Mel also said was, if you have a hard time with a new habit, just go five, four, three, two, one backwards. So basically she has a whole book on it. If any of your listeners want to read it, she's fantastic. And, and so if you set your alarm and you, you walk over, you're asleep and you want to turn it off and you really want to go back to bed, you say five, four, three, two, one, and it snaps you out of whatever you're thinking 
And for me, it snapped me out of wanting to go back into my bed. I have to try that tomorrow. It's so good. Okay. So it gets my butt downstairs. So I get downstairs. Um, what I like to do first for me is do my meditation or try to meditate for 10 minutes before I have my tea and before I have any caffeine in my body that's got my mind going crazy. So I do 10 minutes of that. And Insight Timer is a great app for guided meditations. And I might just be the person who needs a guided meditation because <laughs> I have too many things going on in my mind when I'm trying to be quiet, but it works. And then I go right to writing. I go right to journaling from the artist way. And that is three pages of writing whatever comes out of you. It does not have to be about anything in particular. You're just writing to write. And um, it, it, it's, um, it was really interesting. There was the Olympics, obviously the summer Olympics, and there was an Olympian who was on TV talking about this. And not only does he write for his three pages, he burns them. So he literally burns his three pages a day. So the writing is, is not anything like, I save all my journals because that's just the way I am. I like to see them all like, oh my gosh, I have so many, but he burns his because the, wow. whole, part, the whole part is not about um, writing and to look at it later or to share it. It's just your personal thoughts. It's really just kind of, it could be a laundry list of to do's that day to, you know, a new idea you have that kind of loosens you up to your nudges things that you're thinking about, maybe things you're, maybe you're thinking about doing this new something and you, you could write about it. You could um, also, I know people who set questions in their writing in the beginning, and they might have a question that that's actually all ready for them to go and write about, you know, what, what do I want to um, do in five years? I'm just making that up. I actually just do, you know, the, the regular writing. And the woman who came up with this is Julia Cameron. And she's the one who wrote The Artist's Way. And she's incredible. For any listener out there, the book is amazing. And um, then once I'm done writing, and I usually write for about 25 minutes, that's about it. I do some reading. And I usually read either a book, a business book about, I, re I try to read a book that's going to better myself somehow. It doesn't always have to be about business, but it's something that's, it's not a novel. It's not like my book group book. It's about just trying something or, or hearing something different that somebody else has a perspective on for art or for my, for my business. And then I try to do some gratitudes. I think that's super important. I learned that from Miss Oprah Winfrey, who's amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just try to send out some gratitudes. And, and that's how I start my day. And then, you know, the rest of it is I'm going a million miles a minute. But mm -hmm. the first hour is, and I call them magic mornings. And so in my calendar, I block it out with an MM <laughs> for magic mornings. <laughs> I love it. I love that. And so can you... So you've been, you said you've been doing that for a year and a half or? Oh, no, I've been probably doing it for about four years. Okay. A year and a half. What happened was during the pandemic, I got to stretch it even further because right. the kids were sleeping and right. I decided sometimes, sometimes I would be, you know, two hours doing my magic morning. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> the luxury. I had a little, oh. I had a little <laughs> bit more time. They're back at school now. They yeah. wake up at 6 a.m. So it's been a little tricky to adjust. I have to take care of them, get them out the door. And then I go to my um, magic morning. So, yeah. So if you had to describe to us sort of the before picture and the after picture of your life before you started this magic morning ritual for yourself, what, yeah. what would be the big contrasting things? Would you say? Well, one thing you hit on right away would be those nudges, those mm -hmm. intuitions, the ideas. So right now, I would say that I have more ideas coming to me about whether it's a new class, a new product or a new painting in my head, or th they're just coming like fast. I can't even grab hold of them. You know, they're just flying around and I'm just holding on and I'm like, okay, that's a good one. And I, I have a, I just write it down now. Now I just write down these little notes. And I would say that 100%, it's a mind shift for me. I, 
I believe that, you know, a lot has to do with just being aware of the, you know, things that are happening, the, 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 um, the guidance I'm getting from just like, I call them universal whispers. That's what I call them. And I write in my, in my pages, like I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready for those whispers. And then I'll even say in the middle of the day, I get this like really awesome idea. And I'll say, thank you. I'm hearing, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm so telling lovely. people must think I'm nuts. <laughs> Well, I think that that's, I mean, we're laughing about it and I love that we could have a sense of humor about it, but I think that is something that actually could probably be addressed, you know, cause yeah. I felt like on my own sort of spiritual journey or discovery of all this, all this magic mm -hmm. that's right beneath the surface that we've lived with all along, but just we're too busy. And yes. there is something that happens along the way where people do think we're crazy. And because we're not, we're not actually doing things the old way or the, the way mm -hmm. that the majority is doing them. And so we laugh about it like, oh, she's crazy. But actually I've struggled with that. You know, yeah. like I'm, I'm now making choices based on nudges mm -hmm. that don't make sense. That don't, mm -hmm. I mean, just between you and me and all the listeners, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I have dropped everything in my life to create this podcast. Mm. Like it, I answered a huge nudge. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel a lump in my throat, which is how I know I'm on the truth uh, to do this. And it doesn't make sense. There's no logical way that I'm going to make money doing this. There's no logical, but it's in, I, I asked for so long to be in service to creativity mm -hmm. and to the healing of this wound between people and create, like believing that we can be creative. And, and so I wanted to, you know, I, ask you like, what happens when you have a nudge that's really inconvenient? Mm. Oh, oh <laughs> what, yeah. How do you deal I with those? Well, and thank you for, for doing what you're doing, because, you know, that is similar to how I'm feeling too. I feel like I'm in service now. It, it's not really about the product. It's about serving others and getting as many people on board because the, and you'll, and you, I'm sure know this when your listeners feel it and they can hear you and they hear your guests and then they start doing or thinking the way you're thinking they're going to send you messages and i don't know if you can see it right there but i have a whole wall i did oh. i did a i did a facebook live on imposter syndrome and i have a whole entire wall of love notes i call them my love notes and of people who have felt that you know, empowerment to do the art or to be creative or to see it in a new way. And so there are times when I get a nudge and yeah, it is really inconvenient, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the way I realize that the nudge needs to be acted on is if it keeps appearing, okay. it's like still happening. You're still thinking about it. Your heart is still thinking about it. The very first time I was asked to do a class, it was for Jean Oliver on her network. She's a mentor of mine. She's my business coach and she's incredible. But she asked me to do a class for her a couple of years ago, almost two years ago now when I started the classes. And I was immediately in my mind was like, there's no way. I don't even know how to do a class. And my fear, the fear came on board with me, the anxiety, the stress. And I was like, no, there's no way I'm going to do a class. And I had like a million excuses to give her, but I think she even had told me this way before she asked me like in our, in our business coaching that she does in her uh, creatively made business. She had always said to us as a group, you know, don't say yes or no right away. Mm. Just don't say it. Just think about it. And so when she asked me, I didn't respond, but of course I, I wanted to, but then the fear and the was like, no, there's no way. You don't even know anything about building a course. So the next morning I felt that nudge again and I just, everything said to do it, but I was so scared. Everything said to do it. And I was so scared. And I wrote back, I'm like, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> and then as soon as I sent that, I was like, oh my God, now I got to figure out how to, but um, it felt so right and it felt so good. And, and the thing about nudges and feelings are, I'm sure people know this, like if you say yes to something that you shouldn't be saying yes to, wh whether it's the littlest thing, like going out with somebody or saying yes to a project or, you know, little, little things, having that donut, <laughs> whatever it is, 
you're going to feel the nudge that's going to say, nah, bad decision. And so when I felt the nudge from Jean and I said yes to her, even though I was scared out of my mind, I felt it was 100% right. And the same thing happened when I did my first Facebook live. I was out of my mind nervous. You know, I could have peed in my pants. I was like, oh my God, the whole world was watching me. Like my mom was watching me, but I didn't <laughs> think that. I thought the whole world was watching me. Anyway, I've now done, I did one a day forever when it was the beginning of the pandemic to just help people get through such a hard time. That has taught me a whole new world of, you know, just being available, being open um, to new things. So Yes, I might've gone around around your question, but I do think that the nudge and the nods to you say yes, or you say no, you keep listening after you've done it to see whether or not it was a good idea and it was something to keep going towards. So sometimes things are inconvenient, but if they keep, if you keep your mind open and you decide you wanted to do something and it, it's not kind of like, you're like, why am I even thinking about that? Just pay attention to it and journal about it and the, you know, do it part of your journaling. This episode of Creative Genius is brought to you by Morning Moon Nature Jewelry. Instantly familiar, yet unlike anything you've ever owned, this extraordinary handcrafted heirloom jewelry is famous for its incredible detail of actual textures from nature. Get 15% off your first order and feel the wonder. Use coupon code Creative Genius at lovemorningmoon.com. I think of I think of um, the source of these nudges as our sort of internal GPS system. Yes. And if you've ever gone yeah. and taken a wrong turn with your GPS on, it's always going to reroute you back to where you need to go to get to. So I feel like what you're saying is like, even when you, you, you say no, and you say yes, or you say yes, and you say, it doesn't matter. Cause you're going to yeah. be rerouted. You're going to keep getting those. Yeah. And then the key is if you're open yeah. through, you know, a practice and I hear this a lot and I know, I know myself when I have a, when my meditation practice is healthy, mm. my life it takes on this oh, otherworldly mm. quality. And actually I've, I've been sort of freaked out by it sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. like I've had that experience of so many ideas and so much serendipity that I sometimes just go like, whoa, I can't, how do you navigate with all, like, in the, it's better to go the other way where you're not, at least you don't have to, yeah. But I, I think what you're saying is that ultimately it's going to come and get you. <laughs> yeah. And you know, um, all that serendipity, I, I, I know what you're saying. Sometimes there's the littlest thing I do. And I, sometimes I ask for signs just something little, you know, like I just really want to see a little heart or something or something. It's crazy how many I see and I, and I look at it and I stop, I go that there's no way that is, oh my gosh, it is. Okay. Thank you. And then, so I think that, um, you know, it can get a little scary once you start being open to things and you change your mind shift to the fact that there is a big spiritual world out there of um, things are going to happen. If you put yourself out there, I really believe that, you know, it's, it's a quote somebody else says, but it's like what you focus on is going to come to you. And so when you're thinking about all these ideas, maybe you're going to get even more ideas. Maybe you're going to get inspired by so many things. That's okay. To me, that makes me feel alive and, you know, tingles. And sometimes that is scary, but I don't know. You just have to when you rather feel alive and tingly than to, to, to not be aware. Yeah. I mean, I, I think so, but I also know that, that, that part of that journey can be lonely sometimes. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's somebody listening to this right now going, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I've dipped my toe in and there's, there's kind of no going back at a certain point yeah. of dipping your toe into this stuff. You can, yeah. It just sort of, it takes you away. But yeah. But there, there can be moments where, where it feels sort of lonely, like maybe all the people around you, you know, don't understand why you're, I mean, the lighthearted thing is that you're talking, why, why is she talking to herself? Why is she, but the bigger <laughs> ones are like, yeah. why is she quitting her job and yeah, exactly or, or leaving that relationship or, you know, cause you're listening to this deeper into, and so there's, there, there can be a time. And I don't know if this happened to you when you were making your transition into this sort of way of being. But if, if, if you did have a time like that, where it felt like, I mean, I've heard it be dramatically referred to as sort of dark night of the soul or, you know, like, oh, but yeah. there's a, there's a, there's a, there can be a point along the journey where it feels 
you're leaving one world behind and entering a new mm -hmm. world and and that can be bumpy and do you, do you have yeah you know i um definitely experience a little bit of that and i can and i think that's why it all goes back to that dream i have of anna because she was a very she like was she would be sitting right next to me saying i hear ya yep yep because when when i met her my husband's mom she is like that she has all the abundance and believes in all the signs and is an artist and she is like who i've become and but at the time i didn't know i i thought she was a little cuckoo to beginning at the beginning i was like what is all that about because i am going to my job and i've got my kids and i don't know you're a little out there so when i think about how i thought of her as i'm sure a lot of people think of me and what's really interesting is that if I look at all my friends and I think about my life outside of my um, art world, you, you know, there's a lot of people who don't get me and they don't get what I'm doing or understand it. And I think that th we all get along and there's a common, you know, we're, I, I hang out with people who are, are nice and kind and have an open heart, but some people still don't get the like artist side of me, the creative side of me. So what I do and what I think that whoever's listening, if they feel like that is I found my people and they're not down my street, but I found my people and I found them in so many different places that I had no idea I would find. And for instance, um, I do a call with one of my friends who I met in Jean Oliver's business class and we're like very like-minded and we both are course creators. And so every week we get on and we talk to each other because my friends don't understand that. They don't get how long and hard we're working and um, understand that that point of view or listening to podcasts. I type in my search in my podcast, you know, um, women, artists, business, those kind of things. And then I listen to more podcasts and I find, and I hear guests speaking, and then I go read their book. And then that will lead me down another road to maybe a course I want to take. And then I'll find students in the course and then we become friends. And then, so I do think that even though maybe your friends that you hang out with and you go get drinks with, um, even if it's somebody you're in a relationship with, that doesn't mean that you can't find your tribe. Your tribe just may not be, you know, in your neighborhood and, or in the, you know, wherever. Do you know what I'm saying? I so totally know what you're saying. And I think that that's, I had a, a, a guest on last week, uh, Jane Dunnewald, and she talks about creativity. She does something called creative strength training. And that, that's a really great episode to listen to too. She's mm. written a book about it and it's fantastic. But she talks about sort of the four cornerstones of creativity. And one of them is community and how, mm -hmm. you know, you need to, I mean, you need to get clear on what you want to create, but then when you, mm -hmm. and then you need to create con confidence around that and have one of the ways you can mm -hmm. get confidence around what you're doing is by finding your people. And so yeah. it does totally make sense. And I think yes. we can be really literal with like, well, they should be in my neighborhood. And actually, sometimes you have to be yeah. to look a little bit further afield yeah. <laughs> to find and them. Sometimes I'll even talk, try and talk to my husband about something like, you know, whatever. And, and I could tell he's not even paying attention. His eyes are glossed over. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to say that for my friend, Renee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> totally. <laughs> I love that. I wanted to just quickly go back because um, this is something of a, of a, I, I always want to know what people, what people's answer to this is. We talk about the nudges and the, and the, the knowings and for anybody who's experienced a nudge or a knowing, and we all have, and mm -hmm. you might not think it's big, but we all get them probably, I would say every day, mm -hmm. there's a source of those. And I have come to think it's creativity. Like that's mm -hmm. the source of the inner, whatever we want to call it, the universe, mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. like there's a million names for it. Sure. What do you think it's trying to do? What is its MO? Like what, mm. why is it giving you all this information? What is it? It's inspiring you. It's, I mean, That's it's a putting good question. Yeah. It's putting so much energy into oh, getting your yes. attention. Why? I know. Okay. Here's what I think. And I may not have had this answer last year, but I do. I just stumbled upon this in the, the last six to eight months. It's almost like it just came to me that it wasn't about anything more than serving other people. Mm. And 
I really believe that all this creative juju that's happening to me is so that I can turn it, I could turn it into something beautiful, maybe, you know, that I think is beautiful and give it back. And whether it's in somebody buying a piece of art or somebody buying a item, let's say for your home, or somebody's buying a course, it doesn't have to be um, serving in the um, traditional sense, but if I can make somebody feel good and feel joy and feel something, something, then that to me is what it's all about. And so I really feel like, so in my last jobs, I would always say this, like my last jobs, even though they were corporate, and I would say to myself, like, what am I doing to serve the world with the <laughs> these jobs I was in. And, but at the time I didn't say that to myself. I just did my job and I got paid and all was good. But now when I, I feel it's just a, it's, it's very hard to articulate and I'm sorry about that, but I do feel that it's an alive feeling and that I'm pushing it back out. I'm getting it and I'm sending it out. I'm receiving it and giving it back. And I'm hoping along the way, along this, you know, journey that other people are going to do what I'm doing and they're going to go do, you know, serve it back. And it's just snowballing. And I really believe that there is a huge movement and it's snowballing and it's being this, you know, the technology has helped that this, the being able to do zoom classes, lives, being able to talk to people, being able to find your tribe online. It's like snowballing. And um, yeah, so I, I would have like, maybe I wouldn't have known that to me, that's what I feel. But now I 100% feel it's about serving and, and giving back this creative superpower, which I totally believe um, we all have. That's my thing. And so anyway. Oh, that sounds absolutely. I mean, it resonates deeply over here too. I had a, um, I don't know what to call him, a spiritual teacher, meditation teacher, who's mm. actually also in California. His name is oh. Adia Shanti. And I mm. used to go on these meditation retreats with him and people would go, you know, tr trying to become enlightened for all these yes. years. I don't, I don't do that anymore, but I do really love him. And I, I do really yeah. think he, he sees things in a way that not the average person sees him. And he's coming from a place of sharing and he always closes kind of everything with, with this instruction to go and enjoy yourself. And mm -hmm. there's always this little smile that he has when he says it. And I've come to understand through my own relationship with understanding that it's about, we're doing this out of love. It's about, mm -hmm. I'm creating this so that you can enjoy it. We're, we're doing this for each other, all of it. And that's what he's, that's what he's saying. He's saying, you know, it, the whole point is yeah. for everybody to be enjoying themselves. That's the why yeah. that's the end. It's love and it's why. And it, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about creative blocks. Uh, I, I hear a lot of talk artists, especially people who are just sort of getting into their groove as mm -hmm. artists, mm -hmm. are really frustrated with this idea of, ah, I'm blocked or I'm stuck. <laughs> How do I, what's your take on, on those moments in our creative path? Yeah, that happens a lot. I would say that I, um, this is what I do when I'm blocked and it, it, there's, there's stages in my, and so I'm more of a painter than a writer or anything I would, or a sculptor. So when in my, in my paintings and um, it happens where I, I'm starting it and I'm so into it and I love it and it's, everything's great. And I could do a dance and I'm feeling a hundred percent awesome. And then it's like halfway through the process, I'm like, oh, this is so ugly. And uh, I think it was Flora Bali. I can't remember who would call it. Oh, somebody called it this, the, um, it's like you, you know, it's like the teenage life. It's like the um adolescent of your painting where just <laughs> and I have three teenage boys, so you know what I mean. So anyway, you get to and so what I tell my students and what I do is I take a lot of breaks in my art where okay, so I'm working on a painting, I try to paint for no more than an hour or so. This is just my personal thing mm -hmm. that I do. I try to paint for, for no longer than an hour to an hour and a half without leaving it, getting up and going somewhere, even if it's for 10 minutes, just go outside, just go do something else, you know, uh, get something to eat or drink that water or something. It's to get my mind off of it and my eyes off of it. And then I'll go back and I'll be in love with it and work on it some more. But there are times when I, so the breaks are important for me to do because it helps me kind of 
not get into a massive block because I have painted before for three or four or five hours. And it is, it's so bad that, <laughs> that then I get into a bigger block. So this is sort of like my preemptive way of not getting into that big block. I don't want to be in. So I do the little breaks, but then I could be on something for 75% of it and I'm not loving it. And I'm stumped of what to do. And then what I'll do is I will put that canvas, I'll take it, I'll take it down or I'll, I'll take it down. I'll put it in my um, house or I'll put it somewhere on a different wall where I can look at it. I'll move on to something else. I'll, I'll go onto another canvas, but I'll keep looking over at it and thinking, what does that need? What is it with that painting? And I'll just look at it for a while or um, some of mine's abstract and I'll turn it upside down. And if it's not an abstract and it's a realistic piece, I'm just keep, I keep like talking to it. Like what, what is happening with this? Some of these paintings are sitting on another wall for six to eight months. Some of them, it's like a week. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I know exactly what to do. I got to fix da, da, da. And so the paintings that go 68 months, six to eight months that are just sitting on a wall or sitting in a pile, I'll pick up and paint over them. And I never paint over them with white gesso. That's why I tell all my students, I'll never do gesso. That's how the Capitola painting happened. I just paint over them. And whatever I had painted before, is part of my painting now. It's in there. The soul of that painting is like that. But if you were, let's say you were um, an illustrator or you were something that was a little bit more technical and you weren't, you know, slapping around acrylics and you couldn't really get that far, you couldn't really do what I'm doing so much because, you know, you spent all this time on a drawing. One thing, some advice I would do is still take your breaks, still sort of think about it, look at it a lot. Um, but also I really encourage people to do journaling. And I really think that there are times when I do not want to be creative. There are times when I come into my art studio and I'll clean it because I don't want to paint. And, and I don't know if that's a block as much as I'm not in the mood to do it, but then I'll take out a little journal and I'll just grab a pencil or grab like a pit marker and just doodle without any intention of what that page is going to be. I think it's really important to give ourselves breaks and to give ourselves, you know, a little bit of a talking to like, it doesn't all have to be roses every day. I mean, I, I like to to feel roses every day, but it doesn't always happen like that. And um, so that's what I would do. I would try not to um, beat yourself up over it too much. Some people go into blocks and they're stumped for a while. And I would suggest just changing up your routine a little bit. That it, sounds, it sounds like what you've stumbled upon is that the mechanism of a block uh, is maybe you're looking at it for too long. And, mm -hmm. and my take on that is that maybe the mind has kind of mm -hmm. had a chance to, yep. cause you can keep it at bay for a little while through, mm -hmm. you know, everything's great flow state and you can have fun with it. <laughs> but then at some point, you know, it's like a little monkey, right? And it's yeah, like, hi, yeah. I'm here. And I want your, I, I'm going to take over now. What are you doing with that line? And how are you going to put, what are you going to, it's so and, ugly. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. exactly. And so, yes. so kind of getting in and out before that has a chance to take over the, the process. It sounds like that's kind of what you've, what you've stumbled yeah, upon. For I also work on multiple um, pieces at mm -hmm. once because mm -hmm. of that. And I try not to get, the other thing too, is um, I will know now intuitively in my gut, if something is done or not, mm -hmm. or if something is needs work or not. So it's the same thing about what we were talking about earlier on just like your regular life, your day to day, paying attention to the nudges and the nods. And um, it's the same thing when you're in your art practice, whatever practice that is, is just, you know, keep paying attention to how it makes you feel. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that stage of, oh my gosh, what is this mess or whatever, that's a stage. And all that stage is telling me, so, so that stage says nothing more than, you're not done. Mm -hmm. It's you're not done right now. It's not saying it's ugly. That's another person. That's that monkey saying it's ugly. Mm -hmm. and what it is, is it's just not finished and that's okay. I love that. I love that. And I think for a lot of people listening, it can, it can seem like that ability to feel 
those, mm-hmm. like we're talking about the yeses and the nos, it feels like a superpower. Like how does she, how does yes. she know how to feel? So I think, I guess I just kind of want to underline again, like yeah. finding ways to quiet the mind. And, and when yeah. you notice that it's taking over. <laughs> yeah. And you know, out. practice. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big thing too. Like none of this happened right away for me. It took practice and reading about other artists and listening and it just took practice, you know, of, of, I have piles of, of, uh, (laughs) piles of that, you know, teenage boy art where it's like 70% done and, you know, and I'll go back to it or not, or I'll cut it up and who knows, but, um, you know, when I'm posting on Instagram, I think I posted about this once too, or people see you on social, they think everything is just, Mm -hmm. it's all good. It's all beautiful. Well, you know, um, it's not, it's practice. It takes a lot. It's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to keep doing it, but I love it. Even though I get stumped and even though (laughs) it's not quite finished. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's your, you're listening. And I think that that's kind of the, yeah, I'm getting a lot of that from you, which is yeah, so great. I wanted to ask you a little bit about visioning and Mm. manifesting. You do a beautiful free class on vision boards. Oh, and you. you talk about um, how thoughts and emotions are really important mm-hmm. for, especially visual, visualizing a new future for ourselves. And I wonder, yeah. I, I am, um, I mean, I've made a vision board. I've done, I've done this and, yeah. um, and I loved it, but I not sure that I totally understand how it all works. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we don't have a whole other hour to talk about it, but I yeah. wondered if you would just say a little bit about, about the power of visioning and the power of doing th- things like vision boards and where can yes. we, how can we dip our toes into that? Oh my gosh. You're speaking up my uh, alley. I love, I love all that. I tell, I, I, okay. So even if you don't, um, even if you aren't interested in painting or drawing or whatever it is, vision boards are for everybody. I have them all over. I'm just looking at one right now, my vision board for this year. And I have to update that class. I'm going to do, I'm going to do, uh, fingers crossed I get it done but I'm going to do an, an update to the class with 2022's vision board so awesome. 2021 was about focus and I got a big fat word that says focus I'll look around and I've been doing vision boards for a long time and I think I it's because I, I I read about it and I learned about it and again listening to those podcasts from back in the day when I came up with my morning practice it, it was a lot of similarities with these solo entrepreneurs who were coming up with their morning routine or their morning practice a lot of them visualized a lot of them did the manifesting my sister and I are like little manifesting junkies and we would send each other podcasts and we'd be like oh you should get that book so I I love it and so I read a lot of books about it and um, I follow a lot of people who do it and I believe it goes hand in hand I believe that um, doing your morning practice <clears throat> and visualizing the life that you want to be, they go, it goes together. It's sort of like they fit together, you know, it's like peanut butter and jelly. They seem mm-hmm. to like go together. So I'm hoping that whoever is listening that wants to maybe try doing a morning practice, then try doing this manifesting and visualizing too, because sometimes when I'm writing, I'm actually writing about what I want to visualize, how I want my course to go, how many people I'm hoping are going to sign up for it you know, things that I want in the future, I try to put on my board and it keeps me focused. And so the belief goes back to, and and I don't want to be too scientific and technical on it because I'm sure I'll screw that up. But there is this belief that the more you think about and the more that you um, write or visualize or see um, objects or places or things or feelings that the more that you can concentrate on that, then your brain is going to start, you know, doing all of that awesome brain work it does to get you to actually have that happen to you. And so for instance, um, on my vision boards, I also, besides having maybe things, you know, maybe it's vacations or it's whatever it is, or it's freedom to have my job and to make money at my job so that I don't have to go back to the corporate world whatever imagery that you want to find out there that's going to um, let's say in a year you have a, you want to, let's say in a year you want to quit your job. I'm just going to make this up. You want to quit your job in a year. Cause I did vision boards before I left my job. 
I had them everywhere. And there was symbols of me, there was photos I would find of me painting outside in a studio with my dog. And there was me um, painting or writing in certain places. And there was um, things that I would find photos of or in magazines of, of what I want my life to look and feel in the future. But you want to visualize it as if it's happening right now to you. So if you have these vision boards in your, like I have one right now, or you put them in your, wherever it is, even, they, only, they can even be little tiny ones, but you act and you think as if it's happening to you right now. And your brain is starting to come up with, you know, you are painting in your studio. You are down there with your dog painting. You have left the corporate world. I am going on this beautiful tropical vacation. There's a few books I have that um, I'm trying to think if I can see it right off the top of my head. I don't, but it's really just visualizing how you want to be and how you want your life to look, to find images that relate to that to evoke a certain feeling. There's more and more studies now on, on how it should feel, not necessarily an object, but like, how does it make you feel? And then you just keep looking at this board. You keep looking at, even if you had it written down, you just keep looking at it over and over and eventually it'll just, um, it'll happen for you. I mean, it is a little bit woo woo, but it is happening and it happens. And I was doing this way before I quit my job. And one of my vision boards was about quitting my job and how I would feel and what it would look like. I didn't know I was going to have a studio. My husband ended up building me a studio. It's beautiful. But back then you, I, you know, I was like, had a, I had a little Etsy shop and I worked full time. Who would have thought I would have had an art studio? Um, so just put things that you feel like you want to achieve and you want to have and how you want to feel. You want to be healthy. You want to lose weight. You want to have a brand new car. You want to quit your job and you want to be a ski instructor. Well, what you do is you find images that relate to what you want to feel and you, you put those all over your board. And I also like to use words I can find some words in magazines. I like to use words too, so that I not only have an image, but then I have a word behind it. There's so much neuroscience out there. Mm -hmm. And I get so geeked out on listening to the podcasts of these, you know, amazing people who have all the data to prove it. <laughs> I was like, yeah. And so I can't really um, articulate that as well as that I do them. I love doing them. I also love actually creating them. It's fun. Um, and I encourage anybody to do so. And just, um, I, I don't know. I mean, do you, you said you did them. So, well, yeah, I've done them and I, um, this is a, a for a whole other episode, but I found out about two years ago that I have this thing called aphantasia. I don't know if you've heard of this, but, uh, -uh. uh but basically my mind's eye is blind. So I can't visualize. And I didn't know, oh. and, and most of us who have this yeah. just don't know that that's not how everybody is. And so when I found out that you could like close your eyes and you can see things when you close yeah. your eyes, yeah, it, I mean, so much fell into place for me. I used to feel like it, during meditation retreats, if somebody says, you know, surround your, or a guided meditation, yeah. surround yourself in white light. I used to feel like I, I must be broken. I can't see the white oh, light. Like no. I can't see. So I understand now how, how that mm. has actually is a superpower for me. And I, I, I totally understand the ways I grieved a little bit at first, but now I, it's like, it's led to so many other wonderful things for me, but I, what I really love about what you were just saying about visioning and vision boarding is that it doesn't have to just happen through seeing something with your mind's eye. You can, it, and in fact, the key seems to be through the feelings and mm -hmm. so all of these different yep. the board, the imagination, they're all different tools that we use to elicit that feeling. And mm -hmm. I think, I think that's what I'm taking from what you're saying as the big yeah. important takeaway is it doesn't really matter how you get there, but it really matters that you focus on, on feeling in the way that you want to feel and then practicing that. And yeah. Right. Like I want to feel that I am able to, you know, support my family. I want to feel good when I go into my studio, I want to feel amazing when I'm painting. I mean, sure. They're all 
fantastic feelings I want, but so what? I'm not going to put on my board feelings that I'm going to, you know, shoot for the stars and I want to feel amazing. And so I'm going to have all the imagery I can and the words to, to complement that. And little, you can make little things. Like I made a little vision board once we were refinancing our house like five years ago or something. And we needed it to be a certain amount to like it had to be valued at a certain amount. And so I did this little tiny vision board. It was only like five inches by eight inches, but I had a champagne um, label. And I had that because we were going to celebrate. So the champagne label had nothing to do with finance, refinancing your house, but it it was all about celebrating the, feeling. the yeah. fact that our appraisal was going to be fine. We were, my husband was like fixing the house and we were building and you, you know what I mean? So, so think about like, are you going to celebrate? Um, are you going to take that family on that vacation because you've made so much money on that thing that you just did? And how's that vacation going to feel? Mm -hmm. Like, are you going to go to Hawaii and you can, you can hear the trees and you can step your feet into that beautiful, warm water. Unlike our, <laughs> like our water is freezing, <laughs> you, you know, so, so as many things that you can do to represent a feeling, not necessarily a picture of like a house being built. Right. This is just a little example. Right. Yeah. It's about the feelings. Yeah. And I think, I love that. And I think um, that, you know, and I learned from so many, um, other people who, who have taught me and I'm still, I'm still learning, but if you, if you just look or Google anything like with manifesting or, um, visualizing, there's a world out there of little techniques that you can do. And even if it's for a little bit every day, like five minutes, add it to your morning, morning routine because I'll do that. I'll do that throughout the day. It's just, um, it's been really helpful too. I love that. So, Thank you. That's really, really helpful. Um, I wanted to ask you, I, I don't know if you know this or how you would even know this, but I pull a card before every show. Oh, you so do? That every guest, there's sort of a theme that, um, in, I don't know. It's just, I, I, yeah, yeah I say That's a little awesome. and I pull a little card and the card for our episode today was humor. <gasps> which I loved. So I wanted to ask you what comes up for you when I say that about humor and maybe it's like what humor's role is with creative process or oh, how does humor serve you? Yes. Or what, like what's coming up for you when I- Well, I just think it's so funny because I think it's all about lightness. It's, it's just, you know what? Nothing is too heavy. Nothing is too um, I, it's serious to me. I think you can't go around life without humor. I, I, I love to laugh. I may not be funny, but I like to laugh. I can laugh at myself. I, I, I like to um, be playful because humor is more playful and joyful than going the other, the other direction, mm -hmm. which, you know, so I like to have humor as I, I think it's awesome, but I'm laughing because we've laughed a lot today and like, you know, just little scenarios of craziness. Um, so that's an example, like we're talking about something serious, but yet you just got to throw a little humor into all of it. And um, I love it. Thank you gotta you. laugh at yourself too. Yeah, you know, you nothing's that serious. You gotta laugh at yourself that you think that the whole world's watching you on a Facebook live and it's just <laughs> your mom, right? Like that's humor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, before we go, I wanted to, I just wanted to mention you have, um, you've told me about this new course that you have coming out uh, called Watercolors in Bloom. And did you yeah. want to tell us a little bit about that? Or was that yes. Oh, I, you know, it's, I've been working on it for so long and I wrote about this this morning that, um, you know, it's a hard, it's hot. You got to have humor, but it is hard sometimes to do everything yourself from learning the whole entire, you know, technical part of a class, but it is a course that's it's so close to me because I am crazy about color and I'm crazy about flowers. We didn't even talk about those today, but flowers and color to me um, really brighten me up. And I feel that in my art, it brightens other people up. And if I can teach people to paint the same way with flowers and color, then that's going to brighten them up. And it's all about that. And so the course is it's pretty robust. Like I kept thinking, oh, should I just add that to it? Should I just <laughs> do it? And it's probably why it took me so long to actually release it. So it's... Um, 
it's released out into the world and it's all about watercolor, but it's not just your traditional watercolor. I am not going to be the technical teacher that any, you're not going to learn technical things from me. Clearly it's more about um, having fun and bringing humor. Like there's some parts in my lessons that I'm just laughing at myself because you just kind of have to. And I do believe watercolor is a medium where people sometimes are a little bit afraid of watercolor the same way. I'm actually afraid of oils, but you know, that's a whole nother story, but uh, watercolors don't have to be scary if you just let go and have fun and not feel so in control of them. And so I broke the class, the course down into like traditional watercolors, traditional bot botanicals into even doing liquid watercolors where it's all abstract and you're just letting it go. And it's, that's all part of that one lesson. So there's different lessons. I guide you through it. There's a private Facebook group for it. I want to do it. it. It's so I much fun. I and do it. Um, yeah. I, I just love it. And so I try to do these courses take, you know, six to eight weeks to make. And, you know, I try to do like three a year and I'm really, really happy with it. And I have to tell you, it's so funny. Like this is 7 a.m. in the morning or whatever I did this and I hit the go button or I hit the button and I looked back at what it looked like. I literally was the only one in my house. Everybody had left. I just like did a little happy dance <laughs> before, be, before that monkey had a chance to be like, what are you crazy? Nobody's mm -hmm. going to buy it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, if somebody does want to sign up for it and I do, uh, where, where should they go? Where should they go? Okay. Go it's just, that? you can go right to my website. It's andreagarvey.com. Okay. It's on the homepage. It's on its course page. You won't have any problem finding it. And okay. it's just called, it's called watercolors in bloom. Well, congratulations. Yeah. I know that that is a lot of work to do that. And I just have one more question for you yeah. before we go. This yeah. is a billboard question. I ask everybody. Yes. If you had a billboard that every person in the world who longed to be an artist or connect with those nudges and those knowings, but for whatever reason, just believe that that was not available to them. What would you put on this billboard so they would see it? Okay, so my billboard probably be too, my old advertising days would be like, no, you got to keep it the four words, but I can't on this billboard because this okay. billboard is for me, you know, I really, really believe that our creativity is our superpower. And I've said that a million times. And I think that every single person is creative. It's, it's our superpower. Some people just don't know about their superpower yet. And how you get to your superpower, I believe, this is my long billboard, is you, is you have the faith, you have the trust in yourself, and you have the practice. You know, and you can't have a superpower without practice, right? You can't just, it's not going to happen without practice. So, but once you let go and you believe that you're creative, oh my goodness, all the magic in the world's going to happen. That's my billboard. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It is. It, it, thank you. That's it's, like 10 billboards. You know, well, each well, sentence I, is. Yeah. I think it's okay to, you know, sometimes you see those billboards. There's like a few of them and you're driving yes. on the highway. Well, just put yes. it over a few. I think that's totally fine. Yeah. It's been I would an just... absolute joy to talk to you today. <laughs> I would love to have thank you back you. on the show. I've had so much fun with you. And there's so many things that we actually didn't even cover that I hope we would. So yes. maybe one day we can. I would love to come back. Kate, it was so nice to meet you. I'm so excited about what you're doing with the world. It's amazing. So thank you too. Thank you. Andrea is reminding us that there is a mysterious, dormant, unseen energy that lives inside all of us, waiting for the perfect, pivotal moments to present itself. And that meeting these moments with curiosity is how we can step onto the paths of our own destiny. She says so much, if not all, of the art that she creates today can be found inside that one first painting the one that came from the dream. It is as if that dream was a seed and her attention to it and curiosity about it were the sunlight and nourishment that brought it and her whole career as an artist to life. She reminds us that when we get creative nudges or universal whispers as she likes to call them, no matter how big or small, our job is to do whatever it takes to listen, stay open and follow them. She talked about the life-changing power of creating rituals for ourselves, like journaling, meditation, gratitude, quiet time, and just slowing down in general. 
I thought it was worth underlining that many answers to questions Andrea has had have come to her when she has asked a question and then left some space for the answer to come. And I loved her promise that once you let go and believe that you are creative, that is when the magic happens. See a picture of my favorite Andrea Garvey painting and find links to her website, including her incredibly gorgeous new class, Watercolors in Bloom, which I have taken, and I can tell you it is an absolute feast for the creative soul. It's all in the show notes on katesheppardcreative.com slash creativegenius. That's S-H-E-P-H-E-R-D. And remember at the beginning of the show when I told you about the card that I pulled from the Creative Genius deck for today's show? The word was humor. How perfect is that? So I'll leave you with this thought. What would be available to you if you invited curiosity and humor to join you as you set out to follow your own inner nudges on your creative journey? If you are enjoying this podcast, please take a moment to share it with a few friends right now. I'm on a mission to get this into as many ears and hearts as possible, and I need your help. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to support the show, please consider joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash creative genius podcast. Your support helps make it possible for me to continue bringing you these inspiring conversations with artists every other week. As a Patreon member, you'll have access to things like bonus content, live Ask Me Anything sessions, and even original art sent right to your door. We have an incredible lineup of guests coming up. You won't want to miss a single one. So before you forget, hit the subscribe button in your podcast app. And I would love it if you'd head over to iTunes to leave the show a review. I love your feedback. It helps me learn how to continue to evolve and improve the show for you. And did you know you can watch full video of most of our episodes? Head over to katesheppardcreative.com slash creativegenius for all the details. Thank you again for listening. May you find and unleash your creative genius.